Good morning everyone. Today we will continue our discussion on qualitative analysis. So in the previous class what we did was uh, study the solubility product and uh, the common and effect to explain how the classification of metal ions into various groups. So there we knew the importance of uh, why the classification and what are the basis of that classification we tried to understand. So in today's class, we are going to study another aspect uh, in the Catan analysis and that is the interfering acid radicals. So this, if you try to define, it is certain acid radicals interfere in the qualitative analysis of met lines. These are chromates, arsenide, arsenates, nites, arsenides, oxalates, borates, fluorides, phosphates, and silicates. So, uh, in the last class, when I showed you the table, I showed you the different groups and the corresponding cations and uh, uh, their group reagents. Uh, apart from that, uh, there are some acid radicals, uh, the anions. Uh, that can interfere with uh, the proper systematic analysis of cations. So those interfering uh, anions is what we are going to study in this particular session. So let's look into which are all the interfering acid radicals. So basically the acid radicals that interfere with the analysis of metal ions, these are chromates, arsenates, arsenides, oxalates, borates, fluorides, phosphates and silicates. So I hope uh, most of these uh, terminologies you might have come across somewhere in the uh, while study of the chemistry. So uh, it is not very difficult. Usually whenever this aids come that means O's has a power um, as a, uh, a subscript as uh, 4. So this is chromate, so CrO4 to minus. Arsenate means it is As, again O4, 3 minus. Night, whenever it comes, usually it is O3. So it is arsenite means As O3, 3 minus. So these formulas uh, you need to remember. Okay. And uh, because uh, we are going to see certain equations, okay? And uh, if you know, if I say silicates, you know that it is SiO4, 4 minus, then that is good because that will help you to write the equations pretty correctly. So that's why I want every one of you to please uh, look into all these uh, names and their corresponding uh, formulas or symbols used uh, to exhibit them in chemical equations. So these are the various interfering anions. If they are present, they can interfere with the smooth analysis of the cations. So they have been classified into two types or two classes. Uh, one contains chromates, arsenates and arsenides. They are basically the unwanted precipitation in the group by the group reagents. So in group 2, if these are present, what will happen? They will lead to unwanted precipitation happening. And this can interfere with the, uh, with the uh, smooth analysis of the group 2 uh, cations. So in order, uh, because of that, these uh, need to be removed before we can actually or we need to treat this before we can actually analyze the groups a uh, group uh, cations in group 2. Further another classification is that of oxalates, borates, fluorides, phosphates and silicates. These uh, if present in the solution then what will happen is that this will cause uh, the subsequent group cations to precipitate when you add group 3 reagent. So that is why you need to remove this before you do the analysis of the group 2 
or you add the group 3 reagent. So that is what you have to keep in mind that uh, I have written down uh, the classification along with the group with which they interact and what kind of interaction they show. So that is why we need to remove if this is these uh, anions are present or these acid radicals are present in your reaction mixture then it is highly necessary for you to treat them or you need to remove them before you do the analysis of the corresponding groups. Let's look into the equations to see how they cause the problem. So I told you that uh, we have uh, the arsenite, arsenate and chromate interfering with the smooth analysis in the group 2 stage. So in group 2 stage if you remember the group reagent is uh, dilute HCl plus H2S. So when you add arsenate with uh, under acidic condition and pass H2S you have unwanted precipitation of arsenic sulfide. Okay so this precipitation can be a problem. Further if arsenate is present then it could lead to unwanted precipitation of sulfur okay similarly when you have chromate present as an interfering acid radical it will again cause unwanted precipitation of sulfur so all these things creates a lot of problem because here unwanted precipitation of sulfur or any other compounds like arsenic sulfide what happens is that instead of your group 2 cations these are the precipitations that are happening leading to incorrect determination of the uh, metal ions so it is highly necessary for you to remove these acid radicals before you do any kind of further analysis of the group 2 reagents uh, group 2 cation so that means these chemical equations is uh, I'll teach you how to uh, you don't need to by heart them actually yeah these are very simple to uh, do it on your own okay so this particular thing I'll be teaching you uh, in the live session or in some other way how to balance them and how to write these complicated equations okay so this is the thing with the uh, illustration of this uh, drawback with the chemical equations okay so what happens with the second class of uh, interfering acid radicals so second class of interfering acid radicals involves fluorides borates phosphates and oxalates okay so what happens is that if these kind of anions are present in your reaction mixture what will happen they will precipitate out uh, group Four or group 5 or group 6 metal ions in the while you add the group 3 group reagent so that is why you need to remove them because so in order to remove um, it this particular anions doesn't interfere when in with the group 2 reagent because uh, group 2 reagent is what dilute HCl plus H2S so under acidic condition they form their corresponding acids so these acids are soluble so they don't interfere however under basic condition when this uh, thing is uh, H plus is being abstracted what happens you have free anions present and they will actually form salt with the corresponding metal ions of the other groups and this will precipitate uh, along with the group 3 cations so that is why you need to remove uh, this particular alliance before you do the analysis of the group 3 cations. So here uh, you can see one of the examples like uh, calcium okay which is uh, a group 4 cation. What happens is that uh, under acidic condition they form calcium chlorides which are soluble. Uh, calcium chloride is not soluble so but under acidic condition that is uh, the group 2 reagent condition uh, these 
are soluble so it doesn't interfere however under basic condition what happens the ammonium fluoride is realized so fluoride ion is now available which can actually form calcium fluoride and that can cause and this calcium chloride would precipitate in the group 3 stage and thus interfering with the smooth analysis of the group 3 cations that is why uh, it is very important to remove these kinds of anions before you proceed with the group 3 analysis now we have to look into how we can remove these kind of uh, interfering acid radicals so the arsenite actually uh, can be removed uh, while you are doing the analysis itself why because uh, as i told you that under the group 3 reagent con condition it leads to the formation of arsenic sulfide so it will precipitate only thing that you have to do is you have to make sure that you precipitate out uh, this particular product completely by passing H2S through the clear filtrate. That means once you have uh, taken out the, uh, when once you pass the H2S, you saw the precipitate, you filtered it out, and then the, to the clear solution, you will pass H2S to make sure that you have completely precipitated out, precipitated out all the arsenic sulfide. So this. Uh, arsenide can be removed or can be uh, just uh, separated out from the um, mixture by simply passing H2S. However, arsenide, arsenate is a problem because as I told you, arsenate usually have a tendency to uh, form unwanted sulfur precipitation in, uh, in addition to arsenide. So if somehow we are able to convert arsenate to arsenide that would be really effective so what uh, what reagent is used is potassium iodide so when you use potassium iodide the arsenate is converted to arsenide so once it's converted to arsenide you can easily convert them into corresponding uh, sulfides so this is how you remove arsenide or arsenate from your reaction mixture or you treat arsenate or arsenite in your reaction mixture to do the smooth analysis of the group 2 cations then removal of chromates so as i told you this equation where what is the equation that under the conditions of group 2 uh, chromates precipitate out unwanted sulfur and because why i say unwanted sulfur is because if sulfur start precipitating out it creates a lot of havoc in the analysis process so it is very much essential you should somehow make sure that there is no precipitation of sulfur happen so for that to happen uh, you can stop this by pre-treatment of uh, chromate to chromium 3 plus that means you convert all the chromate directly to the chromium 3 plus so for that what you can do is you can pre-treat your mixture under acidic condition that means uh, you treat it with uh, concentrated uh, HCl uh, you heat your solid mixture to dryness and you continue to do that so that what happens you completely convert all the chromate to your chromium 3 plus so chromium 3 plus will be in the anion state so it can be subsequently analyzed in the corresponding group in which it falls so this is how you can easily remove uh, chromates further when we come to oxalate in the oxalate stage what you can do is so these are the group and so so far what we have removed is all the uh, one coming in the first group that uh, not the first group first class of uh, interfering acid radicals that actually cause unwanted precipitate so how you can remove them you have just now saw it through the various chemical equations now uh, the second class of interfering acid radicals are the ones which actually uh, can be a problem because uh, they can lead to unwanted precipitation of the other group 
cations. So it is necessary that we do we need to remove them. Oxalates can be removed by simple heating up to solid mixture because when you heat solid mixtures contain oxalates, they can be decomposed to carbonates and carbon monoxide. They can be further also decomposed to corresponding oxides and carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. So this way you can completely convert all the oxalates either into a carbonate or a oxide. So this is the way you uh, treat the mixtures that you have um, by directly heating them over china dish and completely converting them to carbonate or carbonate a mixture of carbonate and oxides so this is how you uh, treat your mixtures with the, uh, the mm, oxalates as an interfering acid radicate how to treat fluorides and borates so fluorides and borates can be treated by treating it with the corresponding concentrated HCl. What you do is you treat your mixture repeatedly with the concentrated sulfuric acid. That means you take your mixture containing the fluoride, you add in it concentrated HCl and you heat it till dryness. This you repeat two, three times and thereby completely converting your uh, fluorides into Fluorides and the HF that is formed is evolved out of the mixture. So fluoride is gone into the atmosphere. Similarly, you can treat the borates with the concentrated HCl and you can correspondingly convert it into uh, orthoboric acid which is uh, vaporized out. How to remove silicates? Silicates also you can similarly treat by treating all the silicates with uh, concentrated HCl and heating to dryness. This you can repeat, convert it into uh, silicic acid. This is called silicic acid. And this silicic acid, uh, when further heated for some time, will be converted into silicon dioxide, which are insolubles, which can be easily filtered out of the mixture. The last uh, interfering radical that we need to remove is phosphates. So this is a flow chart uh, in which uh, it shows how to remove phosphates from the reaction mixture. So here, uh, the, uh, because I told you uh, the second class of as interfering acid radicals doesn't interfere with the group two analysis. So after doing the group 2 analysis, you get the group 2 filtrate, which you drew uh, pre-treatment. So what is pre-treatment? Basically nothing but you boil off uh, the filtrate for some time to remove H2S. And then to it, you add few drops of concentrated nitric acid and heat it for some more time. So that if in your filtrate you have some amount of ferrocyan present, it can be completely oxidized to ferric iron. So this is called as the pre-treatment. Okay. After pre-treatment, there are two methodologies which you can use to remove the phosphates. One of the methodology is uh, use of uh, zirconyl chloride or zirconyl nitrate uh, because when you add these reagents, you will have the phosphates being converted to zirconyl phosphate as shown here. The phosphates, when they react with zirconyl ion, they will be converted to zirconyl phosphate, which precipitates out of the mixture, and these can be discarded out. Okay, this is the way. Uh, this is one of the way of doing the uh, removal of phosphate. Another way is uh, after the pretreatment to it to the solution, you add ammonium chloride, and then you add NH4OH till you see drop wise till you see a permanent PPT. Once you see a permanent PPT, what you do is you dissolve that PPT in minimum amount of dilute HCl. After adding the after dissolving that you will add to it uh, dilute is uh, a mixture of dilute acetic acid and saturated ammonium acetate solution uh, one is to one mixture and then dilute it with water and then boil this whole mixture for uh, some time and to this boiling mixture you will add neutral 
ferric chloride solution drop by still you see a reddish brown color once you got the reddish brown color what you do is you will uh, filter uh, this out completely uh, and the solid residue will contain uh, your uh, phosphate uh, the ferric phosphate as well as uh, the group 3 cations and the filtrate then you can use for the analysis of the group 4 5 and 6 cations so this is the way you remove phosphates from the reaction mixture I hope you guys have understood uh, how to remove uh, the uh, these acid interfering acid radicals from the reaction mixture uh, we will be uh, you can ask me with the doubts in the live sessions today so kindly go through them and I'll also post a few book pages also uh, which you can read and be prepared for the classes thank you very much for your kind attention